In this video, I'd like to talk about the features of quadratic functions and essentially come up with a strategy for how best to analyze these functions. So in all these problems, you're going to be given a function, in this case m, and it's going to be given in these three equivalent forms. And so this question is asking us which one of these reveals the vertex quickly. Well, that would be the first one, since this first one, this is our vertex form. This one down here, this is our factored form. This one is especially useful if we need to find the x-intercepts or when the function equals 0, because you can see 4 and negative 2 would satisfy that. So b would help you quickly find the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts, whichever word you want to use. And then c, this is standard form. So this is usually how you see polynomials, where the highest power of x is written first, the x squared, and then it goes in descending order, x to the first, and then technically x to the zero, since that's just one. So all of these forms have different uses. The vertex form, obviously, will give us the vertex very quickly. In fact, in this case, our vertex is the x value that makes this expression zero. So it would be 1 in this case, because if you put in 1 here, this all goes away and it's just 0. And then the y value is negative 36. So when we put the 1 in there, we get negative 36 as our y value. So that's our vertex. We can just plug that in here, 1 minus 36. And again, if we were asked for the roots or the zeros or the x-intercepts, we'd use b. And c generally comes up if we want to know the y-intercept or if we want to use the quadratic formula. So just as an example, if we want to know the y-intercept, that's when x is 0. So you just plug in 0 for everything. These terms go away, and you just get whatever the constant is at the end. So they all have different uses. They are all equivalent, and it really just depends the scenario. Vertex form is probably the fastest to graph. Maybe factored form is also fast. It depends. Whereas standard form is usually the most difficult to deal with and to analyze. So with all that in mind, let's move on to the next questions. So now we're given the function g, again in these three equivalent forms, and we need to know which of these forms reveals the zeros or the roots of the function. So remember the zeros, that's when the function is equal to zero. Or in other words, these are the x-intercepts. So which form reveals that really quickly? Well, that's the factored form. Because again, we're just making the function equal to 0. And then we can use our zero product property. You can see that an x value of 12 would make this 0. 0 times anything is 0. Likewise, 4 would make that 0. So you can put either 4 or 12 into the box here. Because they just want one of the zeros. Now, if they wanted the y-intercept, we'd use b. Because you just plug in 0 and the y-intercept is at 24. And if they wanted the vertex, we'd use C, since the vertex is at 8, comma, minus 8. So let's keep going with these. Now we have a function f, again in these three equivalent forms. And we need to know what is the y-intercept. So the most useful form for that, like I mentioned above, is standard form. Since the y-intercept, that's when the x value is 0. So all you have to do is plug in 0 into the function and figure out what the y value is. And you could do that in any of these. It's not too tedious, but the easiest one is to put it into a. Since when you plug in 0, the first term, you'd have 3 times 0 squared plus 36 times 0 plus 33. Well, 0 times anything is 0. So those go away, and you get a y value of 33, or a function value when x is 0 of 33. So x is 0 and y is 33 for this one. And in summary, it really just depends the situation for which form you want to use. Like I mentioned above, if you want to graph it, probably vertex form or factored form. But if you want to quickly find a y-intercept, standard form is going to be the one or the best form for that. So it depends the scenario, but all three forms can be useful. So knowing how to go from one to the other is an especially relevant skill to have.